Hey, Hickok45 here. If you're like me, you see all the talk on the uh, internet forums, uh, YouTube, and everywhere else, gun shops, shooting ranges, about accuracy, about handgun accuracy specifically, is what I want to talk about. That term is thrown around, oh, everywhere, everywhere, in discussions about every gun you can imagine. And of course, uh, one of my primary interests, uh, you know, are handguns uh, of, the, of this nature, 1911s, uh, double action revolvers, single action revolvers, uh, pistols, automatic pistols, polymer wonders, and all those sorts of things. Well, lots of discussion, lots of comments are made, aren't they, in terms of which is more accurate than the other. And I thought I'd take a kind of a look at a couple here that they are kind of a contrast, really. We've got the Ed Brown Cobra Carry, which is considered one of the, the finest uh, custom 1911 firearms, tightest in terms of uh, accuracy and the whole nine yards. So we're going to take a couple shots with it. Then we'll take a couple shots uh, with the Glock 21, plain Jane, all stock. Just, uh, you know, kind of explore this topic. So let's just take a couple shots. Let's start with this thing. Ed Brown wouldn't appreciate me calling it a thing, would he? <laughs> Put my ears on. These are both 45 ACP. Just standard 230 grain hardball. All right. Let's go out distance. Play a little bit. Okay. <laughs> okay. A little range malfunction there. Big old 45 slugs. Hey, that gun seems to hit whatever we want to hit pretty well, doesn't it? Let's, uh, let's try this one. 45 hardball, 230 grain, Glock 21. I think I hit all the same targets. So, yeah, big old 45 tore up my uh, plate rack there, didn't I? Okay, well, I don't know. I didn't get a definitive answer there the way I was shooting. Uh, hitting targets at from, well, about 20 yards out to 80 and then various sizes and all that sort of thing. Well, one of the things I wanted to point out is that unless you are bench resting your gun, unless you are a bullseye shooter. You're one of those guys, gals, that is extremely proficient, an Olympic shooter perhaps, you know, in that category where you can lock yourself in. You've been doing this for years. I've seen a couple people who could do that. They, they're almost like a rock. It's almost like a vice, a ransom rest when they're shooting that gun. Those people can probably determine maybe a little difference in accuracy between uh, standard pistols, you know. so. I'm not talking to those folks, all right? There are exceptions to, to what I'm about to say, because I'm pretty opinionated on this topic, because every time I see this word accuracy thrown around, you know, I want to jump in and comment. I usually restrain myself, but not always. What folks really mean a lot of times is uh, how well they shoot the guns, what it comes down to. Well, that XD is just not as accurate as my 1911. My 1911 is more accurate than the Glock. I've got a Glock in the 1911, and the 1911 is more accurate. Or my Glock's more accurate, or the 19 is more accurate. I see lots of times I'll see, well, the 40 is not as accurate as uh, the 9mm, or the 45 is more accurate than the 10mm. And it's everywhere, like I say, all over the internet forums. And 
And I get the question all the time too, which is more accurate. What gun's more accurate? You think this gun will be accurate? You think it's more accurate than uh, the gun I have? Uh, what do you recommend, Hickok? What's a really good accurate pistol you know, that I should start with? I want something really accurate. Well, as I have said many, many times, they're all more accurate than we are. Okay? Now this gun, this old Model 29 of mine, has a long, long, long barrel. Uh, you would think that it would be way more accurate out there at long range or at close range. Uh, not necessarily. You know, the three inch 29s I have, probably about as accurate. Maybe exactly, maybe more accurate. Maybe one of them's a little tighter, I don't know. What it comes down to is how well we shoot the gun. And that's, that's what we mean, and I understand that's what a lot of people do mean when they just say that, it's more accurate. Yeah, this gun's more accurate. It's really what they're just leaving it unsaid. In my hands, when I shoot this gun, this gun, uh, I shoot more accurately, you know, than that other gun. But I really think a lot of people don't mean that necessarily. They pick up this gun and maybe they can hit those plates. They don't miss any of the plates. And then they pick up a Glock and they miss three of them. They have to shoot three or four times to hit a plate or don't hit them, period. Well, then the gun they can't hit it with, it's not accurate. Right? At least that's their terminology. That's the way they characterize it. Well, again, I'm on my soapbox. They're all more accurate than we are for the most part. It'd be hard to find a handgun that's not more accurate than we are. You've seen me stand here and, and throw them at 230 yards uh, across the hill here, and I'm not shooting, again, fleas or anything out there, but in terms of practical accuracy, I can't tell any difference. I cannot tell any difference. You folks, if we could do it, I'd put out a call, say, look, if you've got a, a handgun, if it's a mainline handgun, not something someone cobbled together in the garage, but a regular gun with an XD or a SIG or a Glock or a 19, whatever it is, you think, that's the thing, it's just not accurate, it just won't shoot. Yeah, I wish I could say, bring it over here and we'll see. Well, let's, just, let's just try it, okay? And uh, generally speaking, they end up being very accurate. Now, you might have a sight problem. Sight's off a little bit. The trigger might be heavy. You know, it might have a little creep in it, the trigger. Uh, your ammo might be uh, such that it shoots at a different point of impact than it does on another gun. Uh, like these two guns, for example, maybe I can take a six o'clock hold with this gun. That means right below the bull, the target. This one, maybe I have to hold right on the target with the same ammo, uh, or else it shoots, you know, high or low or whatever. Those are not accuracy issues. They're, they're just not accurate, accuracy issues. When I see the word accuracy, I think inherent accuracy. That means if you put this gun in a vise right here, ransom rest, one of those devices, basically a vise, locked it in, put a paper target out there wherever you want to, and pull the trigger without the gun moving at all, that tells you how accurate the gun is, okay? If you get a group this big, you get a group that big, that tells you how accurate it is. And it varies with different kinds of ammo, okay? And the same with this, of course. So if we had those devices where we could do that with these two guns today, side by side or separately, and we put them on targets at the same distance, uh, same ammo, I guess, we might get a difference. I don't know. Ed Brown would like to think uh, this would give you a better group. Maybe it would. I don't know. I've been shooting this gun for a good while now. I've been shooting this gun for a good while. I've been shooting all 1911s for a long time and Glocks for a long time. I can't tell you which is more accurate. I can tell you there are certain guns I shoot maybe a little bit better. This gun has a really nice trigger. You saw me shoot this maybe at the 230-yard target. I have a video doing that. One reason I chose this gun, and I think I said in that video, it wasn't because it's an Ed Brown, although that's a fine gun. It was because the trigger is so so nice. It's just a really nice let off, very light. And uh, so that that assists when you're, you're really pushing the limits. A really nice trigger helps you know, immensely. Uh, so that's my main point is Try to differentiate, if you will, between inherent accuracy, that's just, again, that's mechanical accuracy. How tight will that gun group if it's in a vise? You know, how tightly will it group? Inherent accuracy. Uh, practical accuracy, uh, it's, to me, it's silly. It's silly to even talk about it. You know, if you're, uh, your police department is trying to select a, a pistol, going to switch to the Glock or to the SIG or thinking about the XD or you're thinking about the M&P or whatever it is, they're all going to be more accurate than probably anybody in the department. And if there's anybody in the department that shoots so well, I'm talking practical shooting, you know, just practical shooting. Uh, anybody who notices one gun is much more accurate than another. His name probably is Rob. His last name is probably Lethem, would be my, be my guess. 
and I'm not sure he would even be able to tell for a while, okay? So, and if you don't know who Rob Leatham is, Google him, you'll find him. Uh, so, uh, anyway, that's, that's my take on that. And a lot of people, when we go to a shooting range, maybe you have to shoot paper. And so your whole orientation, I think, is how tightly you can shoot a group. And I know there are a lot of people, they go to the shooting range and they go to a shooting table and they get down and get the sandbags and, whoa, I just slipped on all the brass that's uh, on the ground here. And they get down and they're just, okay, they're just really trying to get a good group with both their rifle and their handgun. That, that's all they do, maybe. Uh, there are a lot of people, I think, who don't even shoot offhand, you know, just stand and shoot targets and obviously don't have the luxury of this kind of range, maybe. And so their whole orientation is how, how well they can group on paper, you know with ammo and with the various guns and they come home and uh, talk about how this ammo was not as accurate as that ammo or this gun was not as accurate you know so that word is just obviously it's an important word when you're talking about firearms isn't it? so my point is for practical accuracy you want my ears back on with what the kinds of things we do just taking the gun and hitting targets of average size What are you going to get in a gun? Now this is a Glock, plain Jane Glock, right off the shelf. Got talon grips on it. Other than that, it's stock. Everything about it. And it's an older one. Uh, trigger that came in the gun. Does have night sights that were put on it by somebody along the way. You know, what gun am I going to tell? If this gun is, my, another other point I want to make is, if this gun is, let's say it's, uh, it will shoot a much tighter group uh, if we put them both in a vise, this uh, Cobra carry. Well, I can shoot all day here at the range and I'm going to hit the same targets with this gun that I just hit with that one. I'm not going to know. What's the biggest variable in shooting? The biggest variable, well, there are a lot of big variables. One of them is the trigger release. If I have a not so great trigger release one time, I mean, that just eliminates any concern about accuracy of the actual gun. I'm going to, I'm going to miss the turkey. I'm going to I'm going to miss that red target right there if I have a little bit of, of a flinch, okay? Uh, if I don't have a good grip, if I just pull too soon, if I, you know, if I just uh, don't have whatever, I'm just not shooting as well, you know? So there's so many variables. The biggest variable is the guy, the woman, the gal, the girl, whatever, holding the gun. That's the big variable uh, for practical shooting uh, most of what we do most of the time, okay? That's the variable, not uh, how accurate, inherently accurate the gun is. So anyway, I feel a whole lot better because <laughs> I've gotten that off my chest. I was going to do an FAQ on this, but it's just, ah, it's just everywhere. Accuracy, accuracy. This gun's more accurate than that gun. Which is more accurate? An XD? Do you think an XD uh, service model would be more accurate than the subcompact or the Glock 27 more than the Glock 26? I probably get three of those questions a day you know, on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to send them to this video, you know, and let them see me on my soapbox. Because accuracy, uh, again, the variable is the person, the operator, pulling the trigger, how well, how much you have shot, how much recoil affects you, your flinch, your nice trigger release, all of those things are way, way, way bigger than any inherent accuracy in those guns. If this gun will group, uh, let's say, three inches at, uh, I don't know, 30 yards and this gun will group two inches at 30 yards or something. I'm never going to know it probably unless maybe if I bench rest them. But who's going to bench rest? Now, that's no fun. Bench resting is no fun. That's not practical shooting as far as I'm, I'm going. Terrorists come after me. I've got to turn, take a couple of them out. Guess what? I'm not going to grab a bench or a sandbag. Just not going to have time for that. So anyway, for practical purposes, the biggest variable is us, 
it's not the gun uh, so you know I know what you're saying you're saying you shoot that gun better most of the time but I think there are a lot of new shooters a lot of people who just have not been into it very long and young people trying to learn or even older people trying to learn about handguns and things that that, that have that they, that that looms too large in their mind accuracy looms too large in their mind accuracy is get out through the range practice with it you'll be accurate okay Whew, I feel better I'm glad y'all could come and help me blow off some steam life is good <laughs>